How's everybody doing? Welcome back to As Hat Podcast on YouTube. The one thing I do collect in comics, a lot of us, I collect what's called Dead Universe stuff. And a perfect example is um, the Ultraverse stuff from uh, Malibu back in the early 90s. You know, Prime and all that. It's dead. Marvel owns it. They're not going to do shit with it. I don't think they've done anything with it really besides like some little small jokey cameo since they bought it. Um, the Valiant Universe was dead. This is the Atlas Universe. This is a 70s company created to take on Marvel. Yeah, and it bombed miserably. Most of these titles got three issues tops. Most of, some of them just two. Usually by the third issue, there was a huge change in it. So I got three of them here. I own more than just these three, but these are three I could put my hands on the easiest because I know I own the one issue of Fright, which has Son of Dracula with a great, great cover on it. All right, this is Atlas, Atlas Comics. All new, no reprints. Issue number one from April, 25 cents. This is early 70s. This is it, the debut of the world's newest, most exciting superhero. Yeah, Tiger Man, we killed your sister. So what? Where's Tiger Man? This is Ernie Cologne did this. So. Let's get them off camera. Let's get this out of here. And mo a couple of these I got at the convention where I also got that fright issue I mentioned. Some of these I used to order, and I haven't done it in a long time. You find on Amazon people just selling like, hey, I'm selling five random... Five pounds, random lot of comics, guaranteed no duplicates, you know, for X amount of dollars in shipping. I got, I think this one came through there. All right, let me check the year real quick. 75. Got really gorgeous Ernie Cologne artwork. And Tiger Man was just kind of like your generic superhero. He had tiger-like abilities, you know. Wasn't nothing special. Damn. Not a Johnson Smith. And I don't know how many issues this lasted. I think I own a second issue of this. Oh, the Star Wars medallion coins. Woo! Bet you were like king shit of the Trekkies if you had one of them back in then. Cause, oh, man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Seven ninety five. And what year I say this was? Like 1975, 1974? That's a lot of damn money. 1975. Damn. That is a lot of money for a fucking... Star Trek, oh, well, you can, but you can get the Marvel ones, which is Spider-Man, Hulk, and Conan for three ninety nine, dollars And they got all these accessories and shit. Oh, my God. That's a lot of fucking money. But you're a king shit. Oh, yeah, I have the middle page of mine's loose. I have not fixed that. We got some Star Wars, Star, sorry, Star Trek model kits, some uh, hobby kits, you know, Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, Cap, Tarzan, Hulk. They ha seem to have a deal with the, um, damn, what was the name of that company? The company used to supply the stuff in the back of Famous Monsters and all the creepy and eerie and all the, all the war and stuff. Remember this? Anybody remember this? This is a very special person. Please rush me one copy of Very Special Person at six ninety five plus sixty cents posted. This was like Carnival Freaks and Freaks. What would we call Freaks of Nature back then? Book. Oh my God. Who, there's somebody I went to high school that actually had a copy of this and brought it in. It's like, holy shit, there was some fucked up shit in there. Pacific Comics. This is back before Pacific became a company. Look at that. New Rare. Friendly service. Special discounts. Thousand, hundred thousand comics in stock. Low prices. 25 cents for catalog number three. San Diego. Yeah, look at that. Right, rip. Beating the fuck out of people. Tiger Man. Is it? Is it? No, no, I'm not sure. Nope, it's something, something magic shop. Motherfuckers. They have their little Atlas news page, kind of like Marvel. Film Monster Home Movies. Okay, these are Super 8 millimeter 200, 200 reels. Damn, Rodan, Giant Behemoth, Godzilla vs. The Thing, Ghidora. Battles of Ghidorah, Return of Captain Marvel, and then they got Super 8, same length, Planet of the Apes, Beneath the Planet of the Apes, Escape from Planet of the Apes, Conqueror of the Planet of the Apes, Battle for the Planet of the Apes. That's kind of cool. How about the prices on this shit? $7.95 plus $0.75 cent postage for the horror one. Well, yeah, same thing. That, I mean, that's a lot back then, but yeah. Then, of course, you know, Olympic Club. Tuck that back in. Now, so they that was their superhero. Well, Conan was hot at this time, so they had... Not just one barbarian style tile. This is the main one. This was Lyron Jaw. And if I remember right, this was a post apocalyptic one. So, 
pretty sure that's a Neil Adams cover. This is issue number one from January, 25 cents. And I think this was one of the ones that ran three issues and didn't really get a radical change in the third. When did this come out? January of 75. All right, we got any credits. Created by Michael Fleischer, RIP. Art by Mike Sikowski. Never heard of that person. Ink by Jack Abel, yeah. Letter by Alan Kupperberg, edited by Jeff Roven. Okay, Jeff Roven is the guy that does all the did all the video game guys and all that shit back in the day. Hey, Iron Jaw, got an Iron Jaw barbarian, goes around beating the shit out of stuff. It's Conan. It's post apocalyptic. They're trying to show titty and ass. You know I mean it seems to go more towards the stuff you would have seen in like Savage Sword of Conan. I love this Atlas house ad. With all the different characters on it. Like, like I said, more towards what you would have seen in, like, the Conan and Savage Sword of Conan back then. Because by this year, I think Savage Sword had started. I think Savage Sword started in, like, 74. And the same ads, you know, is in the middle of the last, of the other issue. And so, you know, Atlas not just going, you know, they were doing, like, you know, adventure stories, sci-fi. Look, they got some horror shit here. You know, this is barbarian stuff. We just had a superhero, you know, with Tiger Man. Uh, there was that Fright one I mentioned, which was a horror one. It's a Dracula title. And Dracula was kind of going to be, be kind of like a superhero. Kung Fu and Karate ad. What's happening at Atlas? What's happening with Atlas? The world of Iron Dragon. Give you some information. Then, of course, bodybuilding ad. Never finish high school. Get your diploma. Well, we got our last one here. And this is The Brute. This is the final issue. This is issue three of The Brute. It's the only issue of The Brute I've ever read. And this one I know I got at the con. This came out in July. You're doomed, Brute. No one can withstand the death gaze of Doomstalker. Caveman versus Cyborg in Live or Let Die. This is The Brute. He's kind of he's a caveman. He eats somebody in the very first issue, but he's kind of like the Hulk. So is what they're going for. And this was supposed to be like his villain. You can tell they were going for like a Hulk-style story. And this is from 75, so... What month's it say on the cover? Sorry, July 75. Uh, Gary Friedrich is the writer. Alan Lee Weiss is the artist. Jack Abel's the anchor. Alan Kupperberg does letters and colors. Larry Lieber's the editor. Larry Lieber is Stan Lee's brother who wrote some of the stuff in the Silver Age. And I'm most known for writing a lot of the Marvel like comic strips. Art in this is not bad. It's kind of cheesy. Um, like I said, it's like very much like Hulk. Very, very much like the early Hulk shit. So kind of a superhero monster vibe there. Same ads we've been seeing in a lot of the issues. That's why the other issues. That's why I'm, oh, here we go. Statomatic Baseball. Hadn't seen that before. 75 Big League. The Atlas Fantasy Shop where you can get... Yeah. I wonder if that's like the Captain Captain Company. That's the one. Thank you. It popped up in my head. And we get towards the end of this issue. And that's when he first that's where he first fight starts fighting Doom Stalker. And it ends with him falling off the wrecking ball. And oh, well, that's it. What's happening with Atlas? Nothing, because not too long after the issue came out, Atlas. Which wasn't selling with the shit, wasn't getting distribution and there's a reason why these comics are from 77 and you can find pretty much all of the big stuff. Some of their magazines are a little hard to find. You can find most of these for, I've never paid more than a dollar for any of these. Most of the time a lot less. And they're all, as you can see, you know, they're, they're reader copies. They're a little bit below near mint, near mint. But yeah, Atlas. Anybody out there else remember Atlas besides me? Us older comic fans, you young comic fans don't have no idea what the fuck Atlas is probably. <laughs> And they did try bringing these back a few years ago, and uh, the company got the the rights to the character somehow. They might have licensed them. I'm not sure on that. And they tried bringing them back, and my understanding is that it just didn't work. It was plagued with delays. That happens. Well, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me that thumbs up. Leave a comment. Subscribe. All the other bullshit. Talk to everybody later. Bye-bye.